The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to Lesson 76 of your distance learning session for Upper 6 Science, Geology with Kenneth Yosimbong. During our Lesson 75, we had an assignment. We shall now proceed to do the correction of the assignment. We are given a map to work with at home and to answer these questions. We are asked to locate and identify with reasons the type of surface deposits represented on the map. We are equally asked to describe the mode of formation of those deposits. So if we get back to our map, you will realize that somewhere here you have a river with a name and then this is also a river course. Therefore, it's easy for us to say which type of surface deposits are there. So the first question required that we should locate and identify with reasons or with reason or reasons the type of surface deposits represented on the map. So at the center, uh, northeast and southwest portions of the map are what? Alluviums, indicating that, uh, indicated by the presence of the rivers X, Y, and Z. So we have three rivers in the area. So automatically they are alluviums and they should be river deposits or they would have been formed by river action. Now, the second part of the question required that we should describe their mode of formation. Now, alluviums are river load laid down by running water action, that is, by rivers X, Y, and Z through the work of what? Weathering. It means that the river action operates on the rock bodies, maybe the bed block, the bed rock on which it is flowing. So what happens? It weathers it, meaning that the river action now loosens the materials and allows it on the spot. Then the work of erosion now comes, mobilizes the material, picks it up and then displaces it, still by the river. Then the river now moves the materials from the areas where it had been weathered and eroded to low-lying areas called sedimentary environments. And then, in the sedimentary environment, the materials are laid down and preserved in that basin before we can have alluvium called sediments. So, the process is weathering, or the mode of formation we have weathering. Then after weathering, there is erosion. Then after erosion, we have transportation. Transportation. Then after transportation, we have deposition. And after deposition, we have preservation. If the materials are not preserved in a sedimentary environment, they are still under activity and cannot provide us the sediment. So we only call sediment after the material would have been stopped in a particular environment where it can no more be moved. Then a further down 
goes through the work of diagenesis and beautification to produce our sedimentary rocks. We are still on map work. And we are looking at interpretation of geologic features on maps. We saw the different types of maps, categories of maps, and we have been walking through right up to strikes, uh, three-point problems, geological history, as well as geological cross-sections. We, uh, we are concentrating now on interpretation of the geological features. Our lesson today is titled Interpretation of Geological Structures 7. We have treated the first six aspects, interpreting folds, folds, uh, igneous bodies, unconformities, surface deposits. Our lesson 76 now concentrates on the general interpretation of all of those structures on maps. So in this lesson, we shall be walking through a map that contains all the structures and we'll be using the same parameters that we were using for each of the structure to identify or to interpret now a whole geological map. So, through our lesson, we have objectives. We have some prerequisites, the real life situation, we have learning activities, we have some exercises, and we will end our lesson with an assignment. Now, as our lesson objectives, we will be able to deduce and interpret solid and drift maps. Remember that we talk on categories of maps. Then we will use features on geological maps to deduce engineering implications of an area. That is general interpretation of geological maps. For us to do this, we require good knowledge of denudational geology, of petrology, of structural geology, and of historical geology. Now, look at these photos. This is the photo that was captured for a beach. And then you have fracture, photo B. Then sedimentation or stratification, photo C. And then D is the photo of an unconformity. Now, a geologist collects petrographic and structural data at different localities in the field. At each sampling point, he notes the coordinates, the name of the locality, and takes a photo of the essential features. Now, what happens? Which method of data presentation will easily reveal the relationship between the rocks and the structures of different localities. Now, if we use histograms and cumulative frequency curves, can we have that relationship? What about stenograms? What about geological maps? Whichever be the method, as we go through our lesson on general interpretation of geological structures on maps, we will see which of the method, or yes, which of the method is suitable for giving a clarity of relationship between rocks and structures. Now, observe map 15 and deduce the striking elements. That is now a geological map. And in this geological map called map 15, we realize that contour lines are crossing bed boundaries. These are contours crossing bed boundaries. We also have visible displacement of beds. And we have at the center portion of the map, you have a case where bed A is at the core, surrounded by bed B, and then by bed C. So, in other words, bed B and C regularly repeat around bed A. We also have this surface, which is called the plane of unconformity, because the information here is not conforming. Now, striking elements therefore include contour lines, crossing bed boundaries, which indicates that the area is inclined. 
Then there is regular repetition of beds and the visible displacement of beds indicating tectonic effects in the area. We are saying that in a geological map because we have inclined beds and tectonic effects thus suggests the deep and the general trend of beds on the level ground. This launches us to the general interpretation of geological structures on map. Geological structures or geological features on maps will, will include we include folds. Remember that when we're interpreting folds, we say that the common folds on maps will be anticlines and synclines. We have faults, and the common faults on maps will include um, uh, deep slip and strike slip. Then we also noted the fact that uh, deep slips are partitioned into two. You have deep slip normal and deep slip reverse. Now, uh, unconformities. We noted that unconformities on maps will include the four types. We have angular, we have parallel, we have uh, ethereal. Aerolithic, then we have para unconformities or non depositional. Uh, uh, okay, then we also have igneous bodies. Igneous bodies on maps will include. Intrusions, uh, extrusions, extrusions, and intrusions. Now, extrusions in maps include lava flows and pyroclasts. Why intrusions include? Minor and major intrusions. The minor intrusions are partitioned into two. You have dikes and you have seals. Why the major are partitioned into four? You have um, bosses, stocks. We have battleships. And we have Bismarck's. Then we have surface deposits. Surface deposits. And we said we define surface deposits with respect to the different degradational agents. This way we have five with respect to the different degradational agents. We have alluvium. Alluvium that is from running water. We have uh, 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 beaches that is from um, waves. We have dunes that is from wind. We have um, uh, uh, boulder clays. Boulder clays that is from. Uh, Glacier action, then we have screeds and talus that is from gravity action. So, this is if you are in if you are in a geological map and you are asked to interpret geological features, this is what you go for. You go for folds, you go for faults, you go for unconformities, you go for igneous bodies, and you go for surface deposits. Those are the most likely features represented on geological maps. So, this is a map 
we are expecting to see a map now with all the elements. This is solid and drift geological map. That map has a, 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 has a title, it has a scale, it has a geological column, it has uh, other geological symbols. So it is a glaring example of a geological map. Now, uh, uh, the B part, deducing and interpreting all geologic features on maps will therefore include recognizing and describing features. So if you say you are interpreting a map, what you are mainly saying is that you want to recognize, so you want to identify and to describe the features in that map. Then, also, effective interpretation of geological map has to do with drawing cross-sections so that it gives the vertical slice picture of the geology of the area. It also has to do with deducing geologic history on maps. So, there are three main aspects. Recognizing and describing features, drawing cross-sections, and deducing geological history on the map. When you do this on a map, then you have given an effective geological interpretation of what that map carries as geology. Now, example one. This is our map. That map has all that it takes to give out information concerning geology. Now, with reference to the geological map above, find the bar scale of the map. From the bar scale, find the ratio scale of the map. Now, describe the folding of the rocks. Describe the faulting of the rocks. Then, identify with reasons the features having an almost north to south train. And B, what is the relationship of contour, of contour 400 and the conglomerate formations? Then, identify with reasons the type of unconformity. That is a practical uh, structure of questions for interpreting a geological map. Now we move on to answer the questions. Now we have more questions. Draw a cross section along the line of section from A to B using the profile below. Add a key. Then six, briefly describe the geologic history of the area shown by the map. So we get now to come back to our map. That is the map. We have been given a series of questions to answer. The first thing, find the bar scale of the map. And from the bar scale, calculate the ratio scale of the map. So, we go in for assessing. Now, the bar scale is measured at 1 centimeter, 1.5 centimeters equals of uh, uh, 1 kilometer. That is the bar scale of that map. We get to the map, you realize that if you measure this bar, on the bar is 1.5 centimeters and then you have um, 1 kilometer. So, 1 kilometer is the distance on the ground and 1.5 is the distance on the map. So, from uh, that is how to express the bar scale. So, we can now proceed to look for the fractional scale or the ratio scale by expressing this formula. S equals to 1 all over L, meaning that um, this implies that X is equal to 1.5 centimeters all over uh, 1 kilometer. 1 kilometer to centimeters is the same as 100,000 centimeters. So our S is equal to 1.5 centimeters all over 100,000 centimeters. Centimeters, we cancel centimeters. We divide all through by 1.5, both the numerator and the denominator. Then we will come up with S equal to 1 all over 67,000 to the nearest, to the nearest uh, thousand will be one is two sixty seven thousand 
Then our ratio scale will be 1 is to 67,000 as required by the equation. So that is how to get the bar scale, the bar, to express the bar scale and the fraction or ratio scale of the map. The next question says, describe the folding of the rocks. On that map, we have, we have uh, the, the oldest bed there is dolomite and the youngest is tough. So we have the core bed with dolomite, that is an anticline, and the core bed with, um, with uh, tough is uh, a syncline. That is the, 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 at the west portion of the map. That is where we have the anticline with the dolomite, the core bed, and then the uh, northeast portion of the map. That is when we have the, 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 the syncline. So, the description. At the west portion of the map is plunging asymmetrical anticline. Why this description? The older common bed, dolomite, is progressively surrounded by younger beds, mudstone, shale, and limestone. The bed thickness differ. Remember that on that map we don't have deep no deep arrows. Then the bed thickness differ. The full trains from east to west and the plunges eastward. After the, oh, it is affected by the dike and fold B, which is younger than the fold. Therefore, the fold is also younger than the formation in which it is occurring. That is fold 1, which is the anticline, the, the syncline. Then, the next, at the northeast portion of the map, is a plunging, that is an anticline at the west portion of the map. Now, fold, fold 2 is at the northeast portion of the map, which is a plunging asymmetrical syncline. Why do we make this kind of a statement of description? Younger Corbett Tough is progressively surrounded by older beds, quasite and sandstone. The bed thickness differ and the full trains from east to west and plunges eastward, affecting, uh, affected by the fold A, which is younger than the fold. That is folding in the area represented by the map. Then I will get to the fold. We have fold A and fold B. This is for A at almost north uh, southwest portion of the map. No, for B at the southwest portion of the map, and then for A at the northeast portion of the uh, map. So if you look at that, that fold. You will realize that the uh, a, a, a fold is displaced for for B. The fold is displaced, which means that the fold axis is displaced. You should take note, and then here. The fold axis is maintained. Is maintained. And then, if the fold axis is maintained, then it is a deep slip. If the fold axis is displaced, it is a strike slip. Therefore, fold A, which is at the northeast portion, is deep slip uh, normal fold. Why this uh, uh, description? The fold axis is not displaced. That means it is maintained and the younger bed move to be in contact with the older beds. That is a normal situation. The deep and the true is to the east. And then the four trains north south. The four trains north south and is younger than the syncline that is affected. What about for B? For B is at the southwest portion of the map. And it is a strike slip fold. Why? The fold axe is displaced. The fold axe is displaced. And there is no down through indicated. Then the full trains south is northwest. And it is younger than the anticline that is affected. That is faulting in the area shown by the map. Then question four. A. Identify with reasons the features, uh, the features having a, an almost north-south train 
That future having an almost north-south train. This is the future. It is a linear structure, and on it is written dike. So that uh, structure is called dike. Why? It's a linear structure cutting across dolomite, mudstone, shear lime, uh, shear limestone, and sandstone beds. Now, the B part of the question: What is the relationship? Of the contour, contour form rate and the conglomerate formation. If we get to the map, you will realize that contour 400 is line parallel. This is 400. This is contour 400. It is line parallel on the conglomerate formation. Therefore, the relationship, uh, the relationship is described as uh, parallelism of conglomerate and uh, the, the contour 400 indicates that it is a horizontal bed and is lying unconformably on other unfolded beds. Identify with reason the type of unconformity. Of course, if uh, contour 400 is lying parallel on, on the, is uh, uh, lying parallelly on the conglomerate beds, then the conglomerate bed is lying horizontally unfolded beds. That type of an unconformity can only be angular unconformity. Then, uh, we now go to our cross section. You put your paper strip and then you plot out information. Remember that to plot out the information, you have to begin first with unconformities, then faults, if there are, and then you end up with, uh, uh, with uh, faults. So that is how it is placed. And that is what you will come out with as your cross section. We saw this map when we were doing cross sections. Then, briefly describe the geologic history of the area shown by the map. First of all, there was deposition of dolomite, which is the oldest bed, then mudstone, shale, then limestone, sandstone, quartzite, and tuff. Then folding came in. Then the dike, then fault A. Because fault A is displacing on the syncline. Then the unconformity came in. Then lastly, fault B. Because fault B is displacing the unconformity. So it should be the last thing in that area. Recall that solid and drift maps have faults, faults, unconformities, igneous bodies, and surface deposits. Describing features, drawing cross sections, and the deducing geological history are steps in interpreting a geological that or interpreting geological data on maps. Now, it is but obvious that from the situation we evoke at the beginning of the lesson, only geological maps can best reveal the relationship between the rocks and the structures. Exercise. Now, look at this map. The profile is given already, and then you have the map. From that map, identify the bar scale of the map. Or if the bar scale of the map is 2 centimeters, equals to 1 kilometer, what is the fractional scale of the map? 2 centimeters equals to 1 kilometer is a simple expression. If 2 centimeters equal to 1 kilometer, then you are saying that S is equal to 2 all over 100,000. 2 centimeters all over 100,000 centimeters. Therefore, the scale will be 1 all over 50,000. Then the ratio scale will be 1 is to 50,000. So the correct answer is D. We are asking for what is the fractional scale. The fractional scale is 1 over 50,000. So D is the correct answer. Now, identify with reason the type of fold in the area shown by the map. If we get to that map, you will realize that you see this call bed, the dips are away. So, if the dips are away, it means that the type of fold there should be, which type of fold? Is it syncline as bed dips inward? Anticline as beds are outward? As bed dips outward? Plunging symmetrical uh, uh, wave, younger core bed. Then plunging anti uh, anticline wave, older core bed. So the correct answer is B. 
anticline as bed deep away or deep outward. Then calculate the limb angle and express the tightness of the fold on the map. Now, if we get that uh, back to the map, you will realize that you have beds of dips uh, uh, 80 and um, 30. 80 and 30. Or oh, 30 and 30. That shows that the fold. Uh, the fold, the, 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 the fold angle should be, uh, should be, you have 50 and 30. So if you sum 50 and 30, you have 80. From 180, the answer will be 100. So if it is 100, then it falls between 90 and uh, 120. So it will be broad fold. The fold axe on the map is not displaced and younger and the younger bed move to be in contact with the older bed. So the type of fold is most likely to be A, deep slip normal, B, deep slip reverse, C, strike slip dextra, D, deep slip sinistra. So which is the correct answer? Correct answer is uh, A. We are saying that the fold axe on the map is not displaced and the younger bed move to be in contact with older Bed. So it is deep sleep normal. Then the rock is an in the in an area the rocks in an or in the area shown on the map have two different deep directions and the amount of deep. So the type of unconformity is most likely to be a heterolytic unconformity, b non-depositional unconformity, c angular unconformity and D, parallel unconformity. So our correct answer is angular unconformity. So we will use this map as a map for our assignment and we will answer the following questions. Describe the structures on the map. Draw a cross section along the line of section from X to Y. Briefly describe the geological history of the area shown by the map. So this way, you can use geology for advanced level, the fundamentals of geology. And they will assist you to understand the lesson well on interpreting geological structures on maps. And it will also assist you to do your assignment. We have come to the end of our lesson. Our next lesson will be on photo interpretation. See you in our next class. Unna tege si ma tege yob Unna tege minga ma tege nyum Unna tege majang ma tege ndom Mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen Ngani bana ma tege mot Ngani la kiri wa tege ndong Esa kina bia jinkido Mane tambia ninya ne njubya yen Tam tama mote tam zabike Tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne injo biyen